quick introduction about myself. Today we're going to talk about Power Virtual Agents, and I'm going to try to build an HR uh, Power Virtual Agent chatbot and publish that to Teams in 15 minutes, less than 15 minutes. Uh, basically, I'm, I've been working with Microsoft Technologies for over 13 years now. I have 18 Microsoft certifications covering from C Sharp, SQL Server, all the, the old good stuff to the most modern one, uh, Power Platform, uh, SharePoint, and so on. Uh, I blog on a regular basis or try to. Uh, you can hit me on Twitter or uh, follow me on my, on my blog. Um, now, because we don't have enough time, enough about myself, and let's jump to the demo. Uh, I'm going to try to to go quickly with this. So basically, to create Power Virtual Agent, uh, you have two options. You can either uh, add the Power Virtual Agent application to, uh, to Teams, or you can just navigate, uh, so search for Power Virtual Agent, navigate to the main site. Uh, you can create a uh, hub account with a free trial. Basically, I have my own account. I think I have one day left for this trial, which is enough for the demo. Uh, this is the landing page. When you you register or log, uh, this is where, where you will land. Uh, on the left side, you have a simple menu where you can access your chatbot. And this is the list of all the, the bots I have. To create a new chatbot, it's as simple as going to the top left uh, navigation menu, and uh, you, you get this, this wizard. It's very simple. Uh, bot name, let's say Ask HR. I'm going to call it Ask HR. Which is more than enough. Create. So this will spend for for a minute. Create different entities, different models that the, the bot will uh, will require. And this is the area where you're gonna configure and define the logic of your bot and the way it's gonna interact with uh, with your users. Uh, by default, it's gonna create different different topics and entities for us. We're gonna have a look quickly at at those. So these are out of the box things like when you say hi to the bot, what it's gonna say, greetings, goodbye, and these are sample to topics. You can turn off or decide to delete topics if you want. So topics is kind of uh, a subject where you're gonna interact with the, with the bot. You can you're gonna create your logic. Uh, I'm gonna keep the thank you, the greetings, the the goodbye topic, and uh, I will create my first new topic for this chatbot. Uh, and let's say I'm gonna call this something related to to, uh, to salary. So. Let's call it salary. Basically, the topic needs to have a name and couple of uh, one or a uh, couple of trigger faces. So the trigger faces are uh, what will kind of direct the Power Virtual Agent to to this section of the bot. So trigger faces can be things like uh, let's say salary. I'm gonna put a couple of uh, trigger faces here: pay slip, uh, payment. I don't know. Um, uh, and then yeah, pay slip. Let's say we have four trigger faces. Now you're gonna create the logic. It uh, you have like power virtual agent design environment where you're going to de define your logic and it it's kind of similar to what uh, you are used to use with the uh, power automate so basically you're going to have a sequence uh, of actions or uh, things that you can add in your power virtual uh, agent chatbot logic so in my case let's say this is the trigger phase this is what will trigger uh, this topic after this i can either send a message to the user or ask a question to gather some information from the end user uh, i can also uh, send an adaptive card let's say I'm going to send a message back here and say, OK, thank you for worrying about uh, pay slips or salary. Um, how nice. Right, so this is a simple message. After this, I'm going to follow it by ask a question. Let's say, um, please choose one of ordering options. And uh, here I'm going to give different options to the user. So let's say first, uh, I want to either download my payslip. OK, the second option would be discuss salary increase. Is uh, last thing, let's say contact HR. All right, so. As you can see, the fact that I have provided uh, this section with three options, it's going to open three branches for me, and each one can have different uh, different logic uh, underneath. By default, the the, uh, the the option selected by the user will be saved in a variable. BVA will call it var1, var2, but let's give it a better name here. So let's say uh, payslip subsection. Yeah. Right. Okay. So um, let's say. To download a uh, payslip, I know that there is an HR internal system where the user can go and download their uh, their payslips, and I can reply with a message say, if you have selected, I want to download my payslip, I can say you can just log to, I don't know, XYZ system, you can provide the link here if you want. Um, yeah. 
and download and select the month and click download. All right, so that's in case you want uh, to know how to download the payslip. Second thing, let's say you want to uh, to discuss how you can uh, discuss salary increase. Same thing. Um, we can also insert images here. We can have a rich text formatted uh, content. Um, so you can also have adaptive cards, but we're going to keep it simple for today. So let's say it's, uh, salary increase. We're going to reply by saying salary increases have to be discussed and requested by line managers. You get the idea. Managers, please start. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Have a word with your manager, whatever uh, word with your manager. Um, lastly, uh, contact HR. And here we can we can ask for a couple of information. We can uh, pull the information from the user and send those uh, details to the power of uh, power automate, let's say, which can either create a ticket on behalf of the user or send the email or anything like that. But we can say, OK, ask question, let's say. Yeah. Um, Please provide uh, I don't know. Let's say let, let's be more uh, tell me more about a request. And this can be uh, instead of being a multi uh, multi option uh, or multi choice is gonna be a text text field, in which case we're gonna take the user's entire response and we're gonna say uh, this we're gonna call this variable um, request details. Um, we can ask another question. Or that, that that's enough for now. Um, so yeah, basically we created a simple uh, topic which provides user with three options based on what they have. Uh, the user uh, has selected. Then either say a one, one, or ask for more information. We can do more uh, with this um, with this section here. So, but for now, let's save this just to test it quickly. As you can see on the left side, you have this uh, chart window where you can test your uh, bot and debug it in, in real time. So if I say salary here on this window, I can see kind of real time debug and I know which step my uh, my bot is in. Um, again, after this, we said, OK, please choose one of the following options. And I'm giving the, the user three different options. Uh, let's say I want to download my payslip. And that's the section the message I wanted to, to send back to the user. So the link to, to, to the HR system or whatever and, and so on. So um, you can spend a lot of time here. The, the idea is that you should start simple with uh, a power virtual agent with one or two uh, topics and then deploy that that after which you can include uh, new topics or uh, based on the feedback or the analytics of the PVA. You can uh, enhance, you can uh, refine the, uh, the, the way your, your PVA will, uh, will answer. But um, yeah, this is just a simple example of how you can start designing your PVA. Um, you can test it in real time. Uh, if you're not happy with this, you can uh, go back and modify it at any time. Uh, I will save this, this topic. I can create another topic quickly. Let's say the other topic will be called absence. Or I don't know, maternity leave. Uh, maternity leave, to be more precise. Trigger will be, I don't know, uh, things like maternity. Pregnancy, I don't know. Uh, paternity, maybe. And you get you get the idea. Same thing. So you can ask questions. You can ask send messages. Uh, adaptive car, adaptive cards. Uh, uh, you can call an action. Um, something here. Let's let's. Uh, you're gonna start with um, with a nice message. Um, gonna put an image here quickly. Okay. You can you can still use uh, use bank if you, if you prefer. This is Microsoft event, so they won't they could get that image to work. Right. So in the message, I can say congratulations. Um, and I wanted to know. Uh, yeah. Uh, please provide me with. Um, Details about your maternity leave. leave request. Let's say here we want to, to know the start date and date, and that, that's all just to send an email to the manager. Okay, so we can ask a question. 
when to start your maternity leave. In terms of data types, you have, uh, yeah, we've seen you can have multiple choices. Uh, you can have text field or um, a kind of an entire user entire response. You can uh, have other other types like age, Boolean, email address, date, and so on. So in our case, we're going to use date. And let's say this, we're going to call it maternity start. Next one, are you planning for it on? Work. So it will be maternity and um, from here we can call an action if you want. We have two information. We have the logged in user. We have uh, the start and and then uh, end date. We can from here call a uh, create flow or call one of the existing flows. Um, if you want to create flow, very simple. You're gonna get those inputs. Same in the same way you get uh, information from Power Apps passed into uh, Power Automate. Um, you have. Some inputs that your uh, your flow is expected from uh, from PVA, and uh, eventually you can send some information back after doing the processing. But basically, yeah, you define the, the inputs. You do whatever you want, whether it's raising a ticket or sending email or calling API. You, you can do whatever you want. You are in in Power uh, Automate. Uh, it's now an environment, so you can do whatever you want. And uh, yeah, optional, you can send uh, some some responses back. Um, the good thing about PVA, which I really like, the fact that you divide your topics, uh, uh, um, you create different different topics. PVA is smart enough to jump from this chart section here. I can say from yeah, let's start with. Um, say user comes here and say I want to download uh, download my payslip. So this is kind of a choice in the payslip uh, topic. So PVA should be smart enough to direct the user to, to that specific topic and jump the, the, the first question. So the choices and, and everything. So as you can see here, it directs me directly to, to the answer instead of going to and saying, OK, thank you for querying about um, salaries or payslip, choose one of those options. So it kind of points the user in the right place uh, automatically. Uh, if if I wanted to say uh, maternity leave just following this question, PVA should switch auto automatically to the second topic and goes to uh, to, to the section um, I, I have defined. So it doesn't have to be kind of sequential processing. Uh, PVA will detect what you, what you want and try to match that, even if it's kind of subsection of a topic. Right. So that's fine. As you can you can imagine, you can play with this and define it as you want. Now. Let's say we're happy with uh, with this uh, PVI. It it can it can answer questions about payslips or maternity leave. And now the most important part is to publish the, the PVA. The good thing is that when you build the PVA, you can publish it to different uh, platforms. So it can be uh, published to Teams, uh, Facebook, uh, Skype, if you if you're still using that, uh, or your website. Um, but for today, probably we're gonna just look at uh, publishing to to Teams. So the first thing is to publish the change. So this will, um, yeah, topic contains one error. Let me, let me go back. Yeah, it looks like this one has an error. Uh, sorry, I, I've chosen the wrong the wrong data type here. So let's say date, right? Then I go back to publish. So publish. Right. So once um, the changes have been published, now you go to the, the to the channels and you you will enable the one uh, you want to use. So for today's demo, it's going to be Microsoft Teams. Basically, what will happen here is that um, this environment will create a Microsoft Teams custom application which contains uh, uh, one tab, which is this this chat bot. Um, so I'm going to turn on Teams. You have the option of customizing your bot before pub before publishing that to to Teams. So you can say edit details here. You can change the icon if you want. Uh, I think I have an icon for that. So let's use this robot here. And in terms of color, I'm gonna use orange. I don't know why, but it's just orange for today. Uh, short description: It can be uh, HR chatbot, and you can provide long description here. That's fine. I'm gonna leave it as it is. Uh, once I save, it's gonna kind of re regenerate the manifest for the application and uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, let me check if I've not missed anything here. Yes, if if you are a Microsoft partner, you can provide your MPN details here, some details about uh, yeah, links to privacy statement and so on. So if you've done uh, Teams custom applications, you, you know what these mean, but you don't have to spend a lot of time here. Uh, you can leave them as they are. Right, so let's try to publish this to Teams. 
Okay. Right. Sorry, I'm in an environment where I need admin approval for that. So um, yeah, if you want to to share uh, the bot with your colleague just for kind of internal review or, or so on, you can uh, you can use a demo website uh, which is hosted in uh, um, Azure. It's just an Azure website which hosts your your bot here. This is a link you can share with your colleagues. But um, yeah, go back to Teams quickly. Uh, open bot. It opens in in Teams as a Teams application, and so this is the. the the exact so if I say download uh payslip. Sorry, sometimes yeah. yeah. So you got you got the idea. So you got the same uh, experience as in the browser or in the demo website. Um sorry. Uh, there we go. Uh I think that's that's it for me. So excellent uh, in terms of time, no, this is uh, yeah, over to you. Sorry. Yeah, thank you, Samarif. Really, really cool. You didn't actually do one BVA, you did two, and which is really, really cool, uh, with pretty much in 15 minutes. So so even though we cut your timing a bit, uh, so that was really, really cool uh, and, and a great uh, storytelling on, on what's available within the BVA. Really, really cool. Um, and you don't need to understand coding. You can just draw those uh, business processes directly into BVA UX. Mm -hmm.